Hello my YouTube subscribers and fans. We're going to be making a forum today and if you guys know me for over the years, you know I want to make tutorials based on questions people ask. I've been asked how to make a forum validate without using CSS, not CSS, I mean, sorry, PHP or JavaScript or, or any of those other tools, just using strictly HTML5. Now we'll create a form right here that will validate using own HTML and show you guys how to do that. If I try to submit it, it will tell me to fill out the fields, even though I have no other script validating this other than HTML. Now I'll type out the entire form and I'm going to go through the form and I'm going to explain it to you guys so you guys will understand how this sets. I want the video to be short, so I can't go through and type this all out, but I'll show you guys how it's done. Now I'm inside my favorite text editor, which I use brackets by Adobe. I, I find it really, really cool. Forget the CSS. Um, we're not going to work on the CSS, so let's forget about that. Let's move down. That's just to make the form look pretty. Let's move down to the meat of everything, which is the form. What I did, I set up a form. I put up an action of destination at HTML. You can, when you're going to use your action, it's definitely going to be a PHP form or uh, um, you know some form of JavaScript typed in ahead to validate your form. But I just use a destination to show you that it's actually moving on from one stage to the other. I set a method of get on my form. Now I'm using the field set property only because I want to separate the information on the form. As you can see on the form where it has this line with personal info and the booking, that's what's separating the, 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 the information so you can see it more clearly. It makes more sense basically. And I have two set of field sets. Now inside the field set we have what's called a legend. And you can look at a legend like a label for a form, for the section. So this is a personal information and that's a label. Now on this, this, this is the meat of what we're gonna do. Now on the input field, I set the input, the type of text using um, the name of username, ID of name here. Uh, it shouldn't be, let's see. It should be name, not username. Sorry, I made a mistake there. So I have name on here. This should also be name, not username. Okay, now we have this all, all, all taken care of. Now, I set required because I want the field to be required. I put an autofocus on it because I want the field to show an autofocus function once the user gets to it. I set a placeholder, which is those letters you see inside the text box when it, when it renders that says your name. A pattern. Most people don't, are, are is not sure what patterns are. Patterns are you're telling the browser how the form is supposed to behave what type of characters can be used in the form, how it's supposed to be laid out, what's the minimum character should be entered, and what's the maximum. That's what patterns can do. Now in this pattern, I'm telling it, give, you can use lowercase a to z, and a capital A to z as well, and there should be a minimum of three characters in the name field. Now if they entered less, I put a title in, this is what they're going to see, and, and I put please enter more than three letters. That's what it's set up to, to do. Now the email is set up pretty much the same thing, email ID required, all that. Now the pattern is what we want to focus on. On the email, A to Z, A to Z, minimum of three, and this is only for the first section before you get to the at sign. As you can see, I have the at sign right here. So it's telling me before you get to that at sign, there should be a minimum of three characters, A through, a through Z. You can also set it up where they can have A to Z, 1, 2, 3, blah, blah, blah. And if you want to do that, all you have to do is put 0 9 to get them to be able to enter um, numbers in as well, not just letters. But I have this set up as letters. So you're supposed to have three before you get to the act. And after the act, we have A through Z again, both capital and common or lower and higher case, whichever you want to call it. And three, it should be a minimum of three after the at sign as well. Now we're telling it there should be a dot or period, and it should only be one period there. And then after that, we have A through Z again, and a minimum of two. The reason why we do two is, and not three for dot com, is there's a lot of countries and a lot of places that use like dot in, dot uk, dot co, you know like those. So if they happen to enter those, it will still work and won't give them an error saying you need to enter more letters. You, you know what I mean? And if they do enter everything, they don't enter everything, then I have this says, please enter a valid email address. If they're missing an at or a that sign or something like that, it will tell them to enter a valid email address. Now the phone is the same thing. Everything's enter placeholders and name ID, all that. The pattern is what I'm most interested in telling you guys about. Now when we get to the pattern, we use zero through nine. We're telling you we need a zero through nine and we need only one. Now, what this is saying is I need them to enter a one, then a space, 
then zero through nine again because you know phone numbers are only letters and then three numbers so one space whatever your error code is space your three digit numbers which you said it should be three right here space and a four digit number if you want them to enter um like a dash take out the space and just put a dash that way they'll have to enter a dash in between those I, I i'm using space but you can use whatever you want basically title please enter a phone number in this format and it shows them the format you know one space three digit number space three digit number space four digit number if you put a dash then take out that and put a dash to show them the format got it cool now that section is done let's move on to the select section we put in a select box here and the reason why we put in a select box is we want this to be able to um, have a drop down list and what they're going to be choosing is the country so we give it a name of country and we make it required inside this we put the first option and we leave the first option value blank and in between the options tags we put a space that way it will validate properly when, when we try to enter without anything in it it's just showing the spaces telling you that it's blank there's nothing in it now the second option we give them the option the value of the US and then we type United States in here and the value of Canada we type Canada UK and UK you can put anything you want here it doesn't have to match what's here as long as it makes sense to you when the form gets submitted that's all that matters at the bottom we have some field set and we set up um, the, this is a date function at the end we put type date name date ID date and a minimum date of today's date which is April 4th to 2015 April 4th right I set it up backwards but you know I am Jamaican so that's how we enter dates so I put it in backwards but you can also just flip this around and put 0904 2015 whichever works for you now for a number field we want to send in how much number of guests so we put input type number name number of guests id number of guests with a minimum of one guest so they can't just enter zero and a maximum of four where it can only enter four anything beyond that it will tell you you can't enter that you need to enter four one through four or something like that and this will happen automatic. We do not need to put a title tag in here for this. That will happen automatic by the browser. Now, just to split this up, we put a paragraph tag in and say, do you require a meal? Because we're going to use some radio buttons now. And then we put the radio button as input type radio meals and ID, yes meals, and value, yes meals. Meaning if the user submit this to you, it will say yes meals with a checkbox next to it. It will send this if they check that. And it will say no meals if they say no which is that one so that will make sense when it comes through to your email now we're asking the user if they want a balcony um, which is the input field for this if they want a balcony and we're using a checkbox it's a type checkbox name balcony ID balcony value equal yes and we make it checked by default now if we didn't want to check by default you can just delete that check and it won't be checked by default meaning the user has to check it if they want to see it there and all these are you guys know if you're using website this is just some labels that I put in front of the form now for the input button I put info type image and the reason I don't use the regular submit button is because I create a button here in my in, in fireworks that I want to use in the form as a submit button so I use the image tag and the source of send.php because that's the name of it and class of send I, I only put this class in so I can manipulate things right here within, during my CSS, but you don't really have to put that class in. Now the form is complete. Now let's jump into our favorite browser. I'm going to hit save here, and I'm going to refresh this to go. And just so you guys know, I'm not just show, making up anything here. Like I'm just showing you another form, and, and I'm showing you a form that somebody else created. As you can see, my send button is there, so you know I created this form. If I hit send, it will ask me to fill this out properly if I put two digits in here just two it will tell me that I need to put three letters As you can see it pops up again you need to put three so I'm just gonna type in my name which is Dwayne I'm gonna do my email at dot com now if I try to hit submit it will tell me to enter my phone number now watch what happened here's my phone number I'm gonna take one of this out one of the space out and try to send this form see it tells me I need to enter it by using space and it shows you the format that it needs to be entered in. Now I'm going to select a country of the United States. 
Now I'm going to select a date and I'm going to show you why this date field was important to put the today's date. Now you see it highlights today's date and it blocks out all the other dates beyond this, meaning you can't select any dates older than today. So I'm just going to select the 23rd. Number of guests, I'm going to enter five because I set my value that I could only, I should be able to only do four. So let's hit enter. You said you must enter, value must be less than or equal to four. So let's do three on this. And do you, whoops, what happened here? Why did that jump away? I, I messed up. I typed in a hole. I'm going to type this out. I, I accidentally hit um, a button to, to mess up my form. Yeah, and it has nothing to do with the form itself. It's just um, I hit a wrong button on my keyboard here. So I'm just going to go through this again. And I'm going to set up my date again. Number of guests is three. Do you require the meals? I'm going to try to hit send. I didn't make, I don't think I made those. Um, it's trying to find my, my form, which I don't have, which is that um, destination that form which I don't have so I'm gonna put that I'm gonna create that page and I'll come back and I'll show you to you give me a second my bad on that one so this is what it was looking for now I create a, pay, a, a HTML page called destination that HTML because that's what it's looking for and it's not finding it so do you want meals yes and do you want a room at balcony and it's checked if they want they could uncheck it but it's checked we're gonna hit submit and if it all works right it says hello this is the form you would normally have validation code here so we're just telling you that you would normally have like a thank you for sending your messages, blah, 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 your message has been sent and stuff like that. So that's how you create an advanced form using HTML5 and set validation using only HTML elements without using JavaScript, PHP, jQuery, or any of the other um, libraries out there. Thanks for watching. Hope this helped. Hope you guys learned something. Happy coding.